Good evening, Chris, sir. How are you? I'm very good. Very excited. How is everything going with the preparations for the Eurovision Song Contest? Uh, we're busy, uh, definitely. Uh, but I have to say it's, it is easier this time because it's only three years ago since we did it last. And we can actually lean a lot on that experience. So that helps a lot. Uh, last time it was like, you know, it was like a big black hole and you didn't know where to start and what to do first. And now you have sort of a calendar in your head and you know what can wait and what has to be done straight away. You told the press that you want to make history this year. So what, what can we expect? Um, I mean, everybody, every host broadcaster wants to do the best ever Eurovision. And that has to be the aim. You know, you, you really have to, to go for the moon and hopefully you reach at least the trees, you know. Um, but I think we want to do something that is very modern, uh, but also very close to the heart, something that, you know, you can feel. Uh, it, it can't be too technical, it has to be warm-hearted. SVT also announced that they wanted to make some changes, change the hour, change the voting at the end of the show. Can you tell us something about that? Uh, no, I can't. Actually, uh, it has to be uh, that has to be uh, published by EBU. Whenever a change is made, it's up to them to actually tell you. So I can't say anything. When will you announce the tagline and the logo? Uh, it will be announced at the same time as the allocation draw, which is very soon. Actually, the 25th of January. Now over to Belgium. What do you think about the five candidates? Uh, well, I was quite clear in, in the show about my, my feelings. I, I think there are uh, three contenders in my book. Uh, and I think all three of them would do well in the Eurovision. Uh, but they are very different, uh, all three. Uh, so actually, I, I, I hope that the, the viewers... Uh, uh, vote for what they feel is right. You know, you have to go for a feeling, you have to go by your stomach instead of thinking too much because we don't really know who's going to compete anyway yet. So you know nothing about the competition or the, the, um, or the challenges that, that you will meet. So just go for what you love and, and you'll be fine. Who would you vote for? Um, I would probably vote for... Tom. Probably. So but Laura is good too. It's, they are so different, but they are both very good. I mean, the, Laura's act and the whole package is really, really nice. Uh, he has some things to, to work on when it, in his performance, but the song is very good. There are five more or less unexperienced artists. Do you think it's okay to offer them a ticket to the Eurovision stage? Yes, absolutely. I, I mean, also you have three more months to really, really work hard on, on the act and, and to improve the self-confidence because a lot of it is confidence. And if you have a feeling that you own the stage, which Laura already has actually, uh, then, then you believe in what they're doing. Well, Melody Festival starts in a few weeks. You've already heard the songs, I imagine. Yes. Is there a song that can fulfill your prophecy of last year and bring your vision song contest to Sweden for the seventh time? Um, again, you never know before you know all the other songs. So you don't really know what the competition is. Uh, but do we have good songs? Yes, we do. Uh, and I would say we have, I think, at least one song in each uh, of our quarterfinals that would do fairly well, too well, in the Eurovision. Well, thank you and good luck. Thank you so much.